I honestly mean it. I've been trying to think if I've seen anything quite like this in an isekai, but I have to say after watching episode 7 of I Got a Cheat Skill in Another World, the concept of teleportation magic, while I've seen that before in fantasy worlds, the way Yuya, our main character, is talking, and the fact that even when he's on his trip he'll be able to feed his pet, says to me that I really can't remember the last time I've had a show where you go to and from the fantasy world at will, your skills not only transfer from the fantasy world to your IRL situation, but the fact that he can then fast travel to and from any place he's been, that is honestly a game changer for a show where I was really starting to question how he would balance his two lives easy. And at first, the way they were explaining it, I was thinking, oh, maybe he doesn't need the doorway anymore. Maybe he could teleport to Fantasy Castle back to his home in Japan. But seemingly, it is based on the world he's in, if I understand correctly. But even so, I really don't remember if I've seen something where someone has a skill like teleportation in a fantasy world, he then can to and from go to his normal world, teleport to Walmart, go back home to his doorway, and then go save a kingdom at a, at a castle. Like, I don't think I've seen that before, and I gotta give credit where credit's due. Now, I do have a full live reaction to this episode available on my Patreon if you do want to see my full live reaction as I'm watching for the first time. I love this episode. I honestly think this was the best episode of East Leaf, hands down. I'm getting more and more convinced that this show isn't even just like a decent show with a couple of like few extra bells and whistles that makes it more interesting like if they keep up the momentum i'm actually gonna call this a pretty great watch all things considered that's and i think that's what bugs me when i see people say that it's not good or there's only a couple of things decent like they continuously use cliches and tropes yet as i keep saying this show continues to do things that really turn it into being more special like Yes, does our main character continue to build a harem? Of course he does. Does he continue to save girls in situations to make them love him more? Of course. Is there a lot of coincidental things that continue to make you say, oh, you know, they're just doing this so that he looks like a hero? Of course. But if you're going to tell me that for him, his normal life is what matters the most to him, and now that he's starting to adjust and enjoy it, right? You have to do something to keep people like me who don't like just the cliches in to have fun. And whether it's a whole building going up in flames and him having to use clever magic uses because it's not like he could just blast with a hydro pump because as we saw with his magic test last week, it's too destructive. He would have killed the girl, so he coats himself in water or he stops bandits or he deals with a douchebag who's working as a model, right? These moments, while well, yes, they're there just to be coincidental and to make it so, you know, he can save these girls and build a harem, it keeps viewers like me engaged in the moments that I'm not that interested in, usually. The thing that you have to give credit to is that there is more of a reason than just because it happened. It's all based on his luck stat, which is actually more of a curse than a blessing in modern situations, it feels like. So, what I really like is that because he goes to and from this fantasy world, there's actually a big curse hanging over his head. How he uses his magic, how he uses his abilities, could very well be an issue with a world not associated with magic. And the more powerful he gets, the more not so human he will feel to people who don't understand that he's getting abilities from a fantasy world. He could very well isolate the people that he's trying to build a connection with, which is a fear that the skeleton that basically gave him the magical abilities said to warn himself about, make sure he picks the right companions, right? He doesn't want to end up alone. When you look at a very simple throwaway moment, and even though they give him a little flustered face when he's thinking about bathing with Luna, at the end of the day, that simple 20 second moment of them playing cards shows why that luck is actually more of a curse. Imagine yourself, things I like to do. I like to play Mario Party with my fiance. I like to do things that require luck. And as much as I enjoy winning, if I knew I would never lose, the enjoyment is gone. And honestly, there's gonna be a number of people who would refuse to ever play with you because if they play cards for 10 years straight and he never loses, they're either gonna think he's a cheater or why are we gonna play, I already know the end result. So the fact that he feels like because of that luck stat that he increased, you know, there's just no point in him playing. There's these little moments that show us he is happy currently and there's a lot of things like being able to scan the pond so he knows where the fish are, reading into the emotions, and yeah, a lot of things are going to be good for him, but there is a general fear of getting too powerful or the current skills he has ruining his current situations, and honestly, I think that deserves praise. Call me crazy, apparently, according to Reddit, but the people who really do call this a pretty trashy show 
are ignoring the fact that the trashy elements, they're written in a way to keep the general mundane things more exciting, because it's not like we can just remove them. If we just throw him only in the fantasy world, it would abandon who he is as a person. He had a shitty life, but he wants to live a normal life. The fantasy world is just a secondary life to him right now. Of course, we know the more time he spends there, the more relationships he'll build there, and at some point he'll probably have to make a choice fantasy world or human world. I imagine at some point something like that would come up. But we have to remember that this isn't an anime for him. This is real. That Luxstat making coincidental things occur in order for these over extreme things to happen like saving people from a fire or stopping robbers or this that and the third. At the end of the day you need to write it so it can be at the very least amusing for the general anime viewer but also remind us that he is human at the end of the day and that, honestly, we like good things happening to him because of how shitty his first episode was and hearing about all the BS that he's experienced over his life. I really don't think this is a bad show by any means. I don't think it's a masterpiece, but I honestly think there is so many bells and whistles about the fantasy aspects transported to a modern, normal world and that to and from really turns it into something interesting. And if they continue to blend the fantasy and human world like they did in this episode, I think it would be the best blend we'd see so far. Give me a crazy doctor who probably wants to poke and pry at the students. I mean, that's goofy as hell, but you can't tell me that's not amusing. I like this show. Like, I'm just so interested in the concept of, like, imagining the first time... You have to imagine this happens. The first time he teleports to go home or go to another place that he needs to go. What does someone do when they see that? Naturally, we know people think he's kind of like, he's a prince, he walks on water. But at some point, there would be someone in his life, whether they hate him or, you know, they're going to expose that he's a witch or something. But even if they just accept, like, oh, he has powers, that's cool. Imagine the first time he brings one of his classmates to the fantasy world and they almost get killed. Or imagine he brings someone from the fantasy world into, you know, the human world. What could that do? Like, Luna as a character, I'm pretty sure is going to be my best girl. I like her. I like that she can take care of herself. She has a cool-ass weapon. But I like the fact that apparently she's an assassin for hire who wishes she met someone like Yuya earlier so she would have never been associated. What if someone like that enters, like, Japan? Like, that could be very detrimental. And even if they don't go that direction, the thing that keeps the show like this exciting is I can think about the possibilities. And if you have me anticipating what could happen whether it happens or not, that keeps a show far more exciting than the generic harems like a lot of people are comparing this show to. It is a harem, it is a lot of love interest, but there's a lot more to it than just that, and I, I, I can't explain it anymore. I really think this is a solid-ass show that is actually getting pretty great the more I watch. Thoughts and feelings yourself, though, down below? What do you think? Do you agree with me? you have a different opinion on this episode? Do let me know down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. Be sure to ring that bell, of course, so you can get notified when I upload on the channel. Like I mentioned, we do have a full live reaction to this episode available on my Patreon where you can also get a video shoutout. So today we have Eleanor, Bailey, Tufts, Minless, and Fabian. So I appreciate the support everyone. Please take care and have a good one.